Why did the unbelievers during Muhammad's time point to this as a clear error? The only reasonable conclusion to draw is that Muhammad didn't know that Mary and Miriam were two different people who lived more than a thousand years apart. And if the Quran got this wrong, what else did it get wrong? Stay tuned. They won't make a sound, or won't make any sense, when the discussion comes to why the Quran explicitly describes Mary as the daughter of Amram. Some even say, well, it was only used to refer to her as daughter of Imran, you know, metaphorically, like she's the descendant of holy people. But not only is that a very, very big coincidence, that the Quran uses both sister of Aaron and daughter of Imran, only as a saying, just to confuse us, just because Allah wants to mess with us. One of these mistakes also explicitly explains that Mary was the daughter of Imran's wife, Amram's wife, and that she gave birth to Jesus. There is no way out of this. In fact, I want to challenge every Muslim apologist out there to respond to this without omitting anything I said and anything the Quran says and explain to us how the Quran makes no mistake here. There is no chance. I challenge everyone. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Sadat here and welcome back. In the Quran in chapter 19, it calls Mary the mother of Jesus, Ya Ukht Harun, which means O sister of Aaron. Does this mean that the Quran is calling Mary the sister of the prophet Aaron, who was the brother of the prophet Moses, who lived about 1800 years before the time of Mary and Jesus? Or can the Quran be referring to Mary as the sister of Aaron in some kind of spiritual sense because she has spiritual or even physical kinship with the prophet Aaron? Or could it be as some Muslim commentators have said that Mary, the mother of Jesus, really did have a literal blood brother named Aaron. In other words, this was another Aaron, this was another Harun, and not the prophet Aaron, who was the brother of the prophet Moses. In this video, I'm going to specifically tackle this second explanation or this second possibility, which says that Mary may have had a younger brother named Aaron. I've pulled out some very interesting, potentially new information from the Bible, from the Old Testament and the New Testament, which will be of use and benefit to Muslims who are trying to explain this topic, this issue to our Christian friends. So make sure that you watch this video in its entirety because you don't want to miss those potentially new points. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Here we go, folks. So in chapter 19 of the Quran, we have Hadrat Maryam, which is the uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And Mary is called Ukht Harun, which means the sister of Aaron. And what makes this even more interesting is that according to the Quran, Maryam, if she did have this literal brother named Harun, uh, they would have been the children of a man named Imran. So let's look at that again quickly. We've got uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the Quran calls her the sister of Aaron. And uh, if Aaron was an actual literal blood brother of Mary, then they would have been children of Imran. And that is according to the Quran, chapter 19, verse 28. Now, our Christian uh, friends and some of the Christian missionaries, they object to this and they say, look, Here's the problem. Here's why we think the author of the Quran got things wrong. Because in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, in chapter 26, verse 59, we also have another lady named Maryam. And this is the, uh, the, the Jews and the Christians would refer to her as the prophetess Maryam. Now remember, this is not the mother of Jesus. This is a Maryam in the Old Testament during the time of Moses, who lived 1800 years before Mary, the mother of Jesus. Miriam also has a brother named Aaron, which is of course the prophet Aaron, the one that Muslims would call Nabi Harun alayhi salam. And of course, Nabi Harun's brother is Moses, the prophet Moses, Nabi Musa alayhi salam. And check this out. This is very interesting. The Christians will point out that according to the Old Testament, Moses and Aaron and their sister, prophetess Miriam, 
they are the children of a man named Amram. So if what the Quran means in chapter 19 is that Mary, the mother of Jesus, actually had a literal blood brother named Aaron, and they together are the children of a man named Amran, this seems highly coincidental. This seems almost too coincidental to believe, too much of a coincidence, that in the Old Testament, 1800 years before the time of Jesus, you have another lady named Miriam. She also has a brother named Aaron, and they together have a father named Amram, which sounds suspiciously close to Imran. It may or may not be the same name, but it sounds very, very close. And by the way, there is a hadith that can be interpreted to mean that Mary, the mother of Jesus, did indeed have a younger brother named Aaron. It can be interpreted that way. It's ambiguous enough. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was basically asked by one of his companions who told him that they found this to be problematic. Mary, the mother of Jesus, being called the sister of Aaron. And the Prophet responded by saying that the Jews used to name, they used to name their children after the names of their prophets and righteous uh, predecessors or their righteous ancestors. So there's still some ambiguity here because the Prophet could mean that people named Mary, like they gave her the nickname, the sister of Aaron. They, they nicknamed her because she was a descendant of the priest prophet Aaron, peace be upon him. So they referred to her as sister of Aaron in the sense of physical kinship as well as spiritual kinship. But of course, this hadith could also be interpreted to mean that Mary really did have a blood brother named Aaron. And that Aaron was named after their ancestor, the prophet Aaron. You know, the hadith could mean both things. So let's go with the second meaning because that is, according to Christians, more problematic and more difficult to explain. So there we have the diagram, folks, and you can decide if you think that this is too coincidental to believe in. Is it possible that there was a Mary, Aaron, and Imran during the time of Jesus, and there was also a Miriam and Aaron and Amram who are in the same kind of triangular relationship 1800 years prior to the time of Mary? Is that possible? Is that plausible? Our Christian missionary friends will say, no way. Muhammad, peace be upon him, they will say Muhammad got uh, the Mary of the New Testament confused with the Mary of the Old Testament and that's why he called Mary the mother of Jesus the sister of Aaron because he got the timelines mixed up, because he got the chronologies mixed up, he got the characters mixed up. So let us examine the words of the Prophet ﷺ when he said that the Jews used to name or perhaps nickname their children after the names of prophets and righteous ancestors. Let's test that claim out by having a closer look at the Bible. Let's start by looking at the New Testament in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 verses 12 to 13 where it's talking about Jesus's uh, lineage there is a man by the name of Zerubbabel in the lineage of Jesus. And interestingly, in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 3, verse 27, where it's giving uh, a lineage from, uh, uh, from a different side of Jesus, there is also a Zerubbabel. So these two are not the same Zerubbabels. From one side of his family, Jesus has a Zerubbabel, and from the other side of the family, he also has a Zerubbabel. Is this too coincidental as well for Christian missionaries to believe in? Or is it possible that you had two different ancestors of Jesus who both had the same name Zerubbabel? But it doesn't end with that. According to Matthew 1, this Zerubbabel's father is a man by the name of Shealtiel. Whereas in Luke, that Zerubbabel's father, his name is Salatiel, which again sounds suspiciously close. It sounds as close as Imran and Amram. So are these the same names that are being recycled? Is Matthew getting things confused? Or is it possible that Jesus had two different ancestors named Zerubbabel and they both had fathers with very, very similar sounding names as well too? I propose to you that the Prophet, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was telling the truth. He knew what he was talking about. 
And when he said that the Jews, not all the Jews, not even necessarily most of the Jews, but at least some of the Jews used to name or nickname their children with the names of prophets and righteous predecessors. Well, we see that that's true. When we examine the New Testament, that appears to be true. And again, these two lineages in Matthew and Luke are not the same. Because if there were the same, then there's some major contradictions between Matthew and Luke. So Christian apologists will explain this by saying that these are two separate lineages of Jesus. Let's continue our examination. Let's continue to test the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to see whether he was someone who was mistaken and confused about things or whether he knew exactly what he was talking about. In the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 3, we're still talking about the lineage of Jesus. One of the ancestors of Jesus is a man named Semai, okay? And Semai's father is named Joseph. Now, Joseph's father is named Judah. And Judah's father is someone named Joanna. Joanna, the son of Ressa. Now, when you keep on following this lineage back, in other words, as you keep on going back uh, through Jesus's lineage in the Gospel of Luke, going further back towards the time of Adam, you will eventually see another ancestor of Jesus who is named Simeon, which sounds suspiciously close to Semai. And Simeon's father is named Judah. Judah's father, this Judah's father, is named Joseph. And Joseph's father is named Jonan. And this is a different Joanne, not Joanna. This is Joanne, the son of Eliakim. So this is a really interesting uh, connection or link that we see between very, very similar sounding names in a very similar kind of relationship. A very, very interesting correlation between the names within the same uh, lineage of Jesus. You've got two Josephs and you've got two Judas and you have... Uh, two other names that sound extremely similar and the arrangement of names is also very very similar So is this too coincidental for our Jewish and Christian friends to believe in? Did Matthew get things wrong? Was he just repeating names because he ran out of names to use? Was he confused? Or is it possible that the Jews used to recycle names sometimes even in very similar arrangements to how they occurred in past history? I propose that we don't have to believe that Matthew was confused or making a mistake here. It wasn't Matthew who was recycling the names. R rather, it was ancestors uh, of Jesus who were recycling these names. Not only recycling the same group of names, but recycling them in a very similar kind of arrangement. And perhaps that was part and parcel of how they would honor their ancestors. Not just naming their children after those ancestors, but naming their children and perhaps even their grandchildren after those ancestors in a very similar arrangement of names. I propose to you that the Prophet wasallam was not confused. He knew exactly what he was talking about. And when we test his words by looking at the New Testament and the Old Testament in these particular instances, we see that what the Prophet said is completely correct. It's accurate. The next example, brothers and sisters, comes from Matthew as well as the Old Testament. So let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 16, where the, the supposed father of Jesus, as the Gospels put it, or maybe the adoptive father of Jesus was a man by the name of Joseph. And this is Joseph the carpenter. Now, all of you will remember that in the Old Testament, there was also a very important person, a more important person, who was also named Joseph. And so in Genesis chapter 35, we have the story of the prophet Joseph. This is the one that is known to Muslims as Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. This is the Joseph that was thrown into the well by his brothers and then he eventually becomes the vizier of Egypt and he forgives his brothers and so on and so forth. Now, according to Matthew, Joseph the carpenter, the adoptive father of Jesus, his father was named Jacob. Does this sound familiar at all? Does this sound familiar to you at all? A Joseph with a father named Jacob? Well, as many of you will remember, in Genesis 
As well as in the Quran, when it recounts the story of the Prophet Joseph, Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, Joseph's father is Jacob, the Prophet Jacob, the one that Muslims call Nabi Yaqub, alayhi salam, and the one that the Jews and the Christians might refer to as the Patriarch Jacob. So this is, again, an amazing coincidence that Joseph the carpenter, the adoptive father of Jesus, his father's name is Jacob. And, and clearly this is a different Jacob. This is not the prophet Jacob of the Old Testament. This is Jacob, the son of Matan. And in the Old Testament, you have the prophet Joseph, Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam, and his father's name is also Jacob. It's Nabi Yaqub alayhi salam. So is this a coincidence? Or is Matthew getting his timelines confused? Is Matthew getting his chronologies confused? Is Matthew getting lazy with names and just recycling them? Our Christian friends will say no. Our Christian friends will say, there's nothing that, uh, there's nothing that shocking about this. There's nothing that unbelievable about this. It could be that the Jacob in the New Testament thought it would be cool to name his son Joseph just like the prophet Jacob in the Old Testament had a son named Joseph. Why not? You know, you don't even have to travel very far, by the way, just to bring in a little bit of Muslim anecdotal evidence. You don't even have to travel beyond my building here in Toronto. And you will find people named Muhammad, and they've got a daughter named Fatima. And they might have, Fatima might have two sons that she named Hassan and Hussein. I literally in my building, I knew two brothers who were named Hassan and Hussein. These are the names of the two uh, grandsons of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And because they're from a Somali family, mashallah, and like every Somali, mashallah, has the name Muhammad in his name somewhere, right? If not a middle name, a first name, or a last name. So these two brothers that I knew, Hassan and Hussein, I'm willing to bet like anything <laughs> that, that at least one of their grandfathers had the name Muhammad as well too. So you don't even have to travel like beyond my building in Toronto to find this kind of recycling of names in very similar arrangements. And this is one of the ways of, of honoring the prophets and the people of old. But this example that I pulled out from the Bible doesn't end with that, folks. Because according to the New Testament, Jesus had brothers, right? There are, there are people who are called the brothers of Jesus. And this is a big controversy and discussion between Protestants and Catholics because Catholics believe in the perpetual virginity of Mary, meaning there's no way Mary could have had other children after Jesus. And therefore, these uh, men who are called the brothers of Jesus, uh, they might be half brothers or they might just be cousins, uh, but they can't be literal like blood brothers, full on blood brothers. But many of the Protestants will acknowledge that Jesus had blood brothers that Mary bore after him with Joseph, with her husband, Joseph the carpenter. So two of the names of these brothers of Jesus, according to the New Testament, are Semai and Judas. And now check this out. When we go to the Old Testament, we see that the prophet Joseph, Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, he had two brothers as well. Well, he had more than two brothers, but two of his brothers had very interesting names. One of them was named Simeon. And he had another brother who was named Judah. So this is a very interesting recycling of a package of names. This time it's not two names or even three names at the most, like the Quran possibly suggests. This is a recycling of four names in a very similar kind of grouping, in a very similar kind of arrangement. So again, we would ask our Jewish friends, and especially our Christian friends, especially the Christian missionaries, do you find this too coincidental to believe in? Do you think Matthew perhaps got Joseph the carpenter confused with the prophet Joseph of the Old Testament? Do you think that's why Matthew thought that Joseph the carpenter's father was named Jacob? Is he, is he confusing Joseph with the other Joseph from Genesis who was uh, also the son of Jacob? Was he confusing Joseph the carpenter with the prophet Joseph of the Old Testament whose father was the prophet Jacob or the patriarch Jacob? Is Matthew getting confused? Is he confusing timelines? Is he confusing chronologies? I would suggest that we don't have to interpret it that way. I would say that it's very possible that you had a Joseph in the New Testament and you had a Joseph in the Old Testament. 
and the Joseph in the New Testament had a father named Jacob, and the Joseph in the Old Testament also had a father named Jacob. And Joseph the carpenter may have had sons named Semai and Judas, who he might have named after the brothers of the prophet Joseph in the Old Testament, who had brothers named Simeon and Judah. So if this is not too coincidental, if this is not too amazing, if this is not too extraordinary for our Christian friends to believe in, then you should have no problem. If you're consistent, you should have no problem believing that it's possible, according to at least one uh, interpretation, one Muslim interpretation of the Quran, it's very possible that Mary, the mother of Jesus, also had a literal full brother named Aaron, and together they had a father named Imran. Even though we see that 1800 years prior to them, these three names also occurred in the Old Testament in a very similar kind of arrangement. So I would end by again proposing to you that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not confused about anything. He was not mixed up about anything. And he was not mixing up Mary, the mother of Jesus, with Miriam, who was the sister of the Prophet Aaron and the Prophet Moses. And in fact, many Orientalists, meaning many Western non-Muslim scholars of Islam, even concede the fact that uh, Muslim tradition is very, very aware of the fact that more than a millennium elapsed between the time of the Prophet Moses and Mary and the Prophet Jesus. Because in the Quran, for example, you never have any kind of dialogue between Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the Prophet Moses. You never have any kind of dialogue between Jesus and Moses. If the author of the Quran mistakenly thought that the Prophet Moses was the uncle of the Prophet Jesus, uh, then that would have made for a very interesting dialogue. There might have been some kind of uh, chronological uh, direct link between the two. But never do you have a dialogue between Jesus and Moses because the Quran, the divine author of the Quran, as well as the Prophet Muhammad, and 1400 years of Muslim scholarship and tradition is well aware of the fact that Moses and Aaron, Moses and the Prophet Aaron, they are chronologically as well as geographically far removed from the time and the geography of Jesus and his mother Mary. I hope some of this information was new and I pray inshallah that it will be helpful to Muslims who are explaining this topic or explaining this issue to their Christian friends. If you want to see more videos like this, give this a like, let me know in the comments. Remember to subscribe and remember also to press on the notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded a new video. Take care. Asalaamu Alaikum.